It was good, huh? Well, well, come on, it was great. Well, I mean, yeah, your fingers can move, but this is a freaking musical mess. Come on, be honest. Did you spot the problem? So the difference between this and that is a much cleaner performance. And that applies to any type of music that you're actually playing. I mean, really, if you want to play cleaner, you want to play with better phrasing, you want to play with uh, much better voicing, you want to play with much more understandable articulation, maybe you want to finally all these harmonic changes kind of get to appreciate them. So all those things, you can improve them just with this. So stay tuned and listen carefully. So let's talk about dumping techniques. And with this, by no means, I mean dumping girlfriend-boyfriend techniques. No, I mean to dump all these annoying and undesired resonances that are created while we play. Because yeah, we are not so fortunate like pianists that just have a pedal that they can lift on and off. We have to really just go and stop everything that we want to have stopped. You just have to accept that you play a cool instrument, but that comes with duties. See, that is a very elemental concept that for some reason, for guitar players, it's only teached at a higher level, when you are more of an advanced player. And honestly, I don't think that is actually a great thing, because you go through your entire training and education playing wrongly and getting used to all these resonances that are completely awful, and just thinking that it's right. So then when you're told to start dumping basses, it becomes really complicated. So I think it's important, maybe not for a just beginner who just picked the guitar yesterday, but somebody who already can play a few songs and stuff, to start to take care of this, to start to take care of the resonances. So in fact, you only need three things to know how to correct that and fix that and apply it to your pieces. So now within less than five minutes, you will be able to start sounding much more like a real musician. No, no, seriously, it's very important you take care of that. Please, just do it for me, you know? So for the first two solutions, all you need to do is actually to use your thumb. I mean, you don't need to have this long nail like me, you just need a thumb, really. Even without nail, that just works fine. I'm sure you have in your repertoire of all your years of playing those pieces that have just some open bases, right? Or are page type of studio. So those are the perfect pieces for you to practice what I'm going to show you today. Let's get into it. The first way that you can use to stop the resonances is by playing the thumb and then immediately placing it back. Sounds very simple, right? But now let's do this exercise. We will take two strings, the sixth and the fifth, and we will play the sixth string. And then right after we have played the fifth, we will run to stop the sixth. And then when we play the sixth, we will stop the fifth. And this movement has to happen as quickly as you possibly can, so that you don't end up with this mix of harmonies. So you can do some repeats on that. Until you get the hang of it. Then you can, of course, just change strings and do 5-4. the same motion so once you get the hang of one the other one should be pretty straightforward now the next thing is actually to add the three bases and once you add three bases actually you can do this on four strings on five or all on six but i mean what's the point of dumping all six anyways i usually practice that only on the bases anyways so when we ascend three times so we have six fifth we stop the six but then we move to the four and we stop the fifth so you see like we have to come back to what we just played to stop it. I'll demonstrate once more. This, it will start to feel a little bit more complicated because we have to go and dump one string and then go ahead and move before it's too late for the next strings. Another thing that you want to make sure is that you don't take it with a string. You see how noisy that is? You don't want that. You want to take the string first on the flesh and then go through the nail. Now let's do the other way around. Let's go from the higher bass to the lower one. So we go to four. Now we play the fifth and we go back to stop the fourth and then we move to the sixth and we stop the fifth. One more time. Now, once you get the hang of it, it's basically the same we just did before, but backwards. And then you try to put everything together. So now 
let's try to make it a little bit more difficult for further practice and because let's face it on a piece you will have also some stuff happening on the top voices and let's put an arpeggio let's just think of a, a descending and ascending arpeggio quite common so um, we will do the same thing with the thumb but we will just add the arpeggio going on on the top I'll demonstrate first slowly faster now the second way to stop resonances is to use the thumb as well but in this case instead of playing and moving to the next string and then coming back to what you just played it will be to play with the side of the thumb so with the upper part of the thumb uh, let me demonstrate so we play the bass then when we are going to play the fifth, we place it in a way that we stop the string. So the vibration is blocked by our finger. And of course you have to place it in a way that you can play the next string right after, because that's the point of making this. We make one single movement, but we tie together two actions, bass stopping plus playing. I find it honestly a little bit more complicated because you do need to go a little bit lower with the action. So if you have a rather high action, see like, like that or something, you will need to accommodate a little in order to get to reach the bass and stop it. But it's just a matter of getting used, really. So let's try an ascending version. That's how it would be. Every time I play, I accommodate the finger and I play the next. And you try to synchronize this action. You actually just need to touch it just ever so slightly like this. You really don't need to rest on it or just put any sort of pressure. Um, only a little bit of touch is enough. Now the problem is that this doesn't work on the other way around because you, are, you have the thumb above the string that just played. So for a bass who is actually going down in pitch, we will need any ways to use the other technique like that. So to practice, you will just need to make um, ascending drills. And the last one you stop and you start over. You will see that this technique can actually extend to stop several strings at once. So if you have a chord where you have two basses sounding and you need to stop them both, you can either place the thumb right in the middle of them. So to, you stop them both. Or you can even stop three strings at a time, really resting with this side of your thumb, just touching everything like this. Don't forget to watch the second part because that's actually going to be very important to just kind of make sense of all the things that I just told you and probably put it in a musical perspective. So link in the description. Now a little tip for the thumb action. So you want to try to move the finger from the base of your finger and not from the first jump. So if you have this very little type of motion and you're used to play like this, try to engage much more the larger muscles. So from, from right here. And maybe just imagine like you're drawing a circle. I'm gonna exaggerate a little bit the movement. That is, well, very much exaggerated. So you don't want to have a straight motion like this. That's a bit more stressful. You want to try to develop uh, some sort of round action so that your thumb can eventually adapt also to the tempo of the piece. And this might help to take away a little bit of this tension that sometimes we tend to play. So students who are used to move only this last bit of the, of the finger, I usually ask them to play those exercises, exaggerating very much the thumb motion, so this kind of circle motion. And that feels so different, that feels so much bigger and so much more like engaging for the hand that in a way it's not really anymore so hard to transition from an old habit to a much more complete thumb usage and motion. So I don't think that if you play like that, don't be worried, it's not such a big thing to change with you. Of course, you need to practice it regularly in the beginning so that you change your habit and you don't stick to your old way of playing. So just keep an eye on that and you should be able to change it pretty soon. Now for the third and last way to stop the resonances, I will explain it in part 3, where I will also play different time periods of music, so that you can actually see that it really is for every music. Baroque, classical, romantic, 
any style. And then you will also see somehow how all these three options work together in real pieces of music. So I really hope you took a lot of value out of this short video and that was your time worth. If so, leave a like, subscribe and please share it. That would help me and the channel a lot. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.